everyone, I am Dr. Godwe. I am here with a new YouTube channel to unleash the various aspects of anatomy in a simple way. So, to start with, I am doing scalp today. This is a very simple but very important topic. So, I will be discussing this topic under the following headings. Attachments, layers, uh, applied aspects related to each layer, then uh, in nerve supply, arterial supply, venous drainage and lymphatic drainage. So today I will be discussing about the attachments and the layers and the applied aspects. As you all know, scalp is a soft tissue covering of the vault of the skull. And it is attached in front to the supraorbital margin, behind to the external occipital protuberance and the superior nuchal line, and on either side to the zygomatic arch. The layers we can remember it by the mnemonic scalp itself. So it has got five layers. The first one is S, that is skin. Second one is C, that is closed network of subcutaneous tissue. A stands for upper neurosis and occipital frontalis muscle. L stands for loose subupper neurotic tissue. And P stands for pericranium. So we will see each layer. The first one is skin. As we all know, scalp skin is very thick. It consists of numerous hairs, sweat glands and sebaceous glands. So here comes our first applied aspect that is sebaceous cysts. Sebaceous cysts are more common in the first layer. The second one is the closed network of subcutaneous tissue. As the name suggests, it is a closed network. And it is uh, attached firmly to the uh, overlying skin and the underlying upper neurosis. Okay, it consists of many blood vessels and nerves. The blood vessels are attached very closely to the fibrous tissue. So in case of any open wound, the vessels get torn and they won't be able to be retracted leading to profuse bleeding. And that can be stopped by either uh, pressure over the region of the bone or by applying sutures. Now the peculiarity of this region is that uh, it can cause inflammation. This inflammation is very painful of this region. And the collection of blood in this region is localized. Any aversion of the scalp, that is due to, the, due to a very, uh, wide range of blood supply, any aversion injury of the scalp, uh, if it is attached to a narrow pedicle, that can be sutured to the scalp with proper healing. So that is an advantage. Now the third layer is upper neurosis and epicranius muscle. Epicranius muscle includes two muscles, that is occipital frontalis, which is the main muscle, and the second one is a variable slip that is known as a temporoparietalis. Okay. Occipital frontalis, as the name suggests, it consists of a pair of occipital bellies and a pair of frontal bellies. So the occipital bellies take origin from the lateral two-third of the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone and also the mastoid bone. And it is separated by a considerable interval. Whereas the frontal bellies um, has got no bony attachment, you have to remember that it has no bony attachment and it is attached to the subcutaneous tissue of the root of nose and also the eyebrow. So that is all about the occipital frontalis muscle. These two bellies, that is the occipital bellies and the frontal bellies are connected together by the uh, gary upper neurotica or the upper neurosis or the epicranial upper neurosis. So the upper neurosis, the attachments are behind, the, the attachment extends between the to occipital bellies to the highest nuchal line and in front the attachment extends between the two frontal bellies to the subcutaneous tissue of the eyebrow at the root of nose whereas on either side it extends to the or is attached to the zygomatic arch. Now as I said about a variable slip that is the temporoparietalis as the name suggests it is in the temporoparietal region that is in between the frontalis muscle and the auricular muscles. It takes origin from the galea panorotica and is attached to the root of auricle and it causes, it elevates the root of auricle. Now, the importance of this region is that any wounds which is transverse, any transverse wounds can lead to gaping because of the contraction of the frontal bellies as well as the occipital bellies. Now, the, uh, the uses or actions are the contraction of the occipital bellies and the frontal bellies help to move the scalp backward and forward simultaneously. The frontalis muscle, the frontal bellies, when, when they are acting from above, that can lead to an action similar to that of, uh, in case of horror, whereas 
the, when it is acting from below, it causes transverse ripples of forward as in case of any fright. That is all about the third layer that is the upper neurosis and the epicranial muscle which includes the occipital frontalis and the temporal parietalis. Now, the fourth layer is very important that is known as a loose sub-upper neurotic tissue. As the name suggests, it is a loose area. The second layer was closed network, whereas the fourth layer is a loose area. So, it is a potential space. It consists of emissary veins. You can see here, emissary veins, that connects the veins of the scalp to the intracranial venous sinuses. So, the importance is that any uh, infection with collection of pus can get accumulated here. And uh, any infection with accumulation of pus can, uh, can get transmitted through the emissary veins uh, to the intracranial venous sinuses because these emissary veins are devoid of wax. So this, that's why it's known as the dangerous layer of the scalp. This fourth layer is known as the dangerous layer of the scalp. Now, the next separate aspect is safety valve hematoma. In case of fracture of the cranial vault in, uh, cranial vault in children, that can cause uh, tearing of the meninges as well as the uh, pedicranium. So that can lead to the collection of blood uh, in the fourth layer, the, the collection of intracranial hemorrhage into the fourth layer. And the peculiarity is that, the peculiarity of the term safety valve hematoma is that the, the blood gets filled in the fourth layer very slowly. Therefore, the signs of cerebral compression takes place very slowly. Okay. Now, uh, black eye, uh, any broad injury to the vault of the skull uh, can cause general, uh, can cause uh, slow collection of blood and that can see through the uh, subcutaneous tissue of the root of nose into the eyelids. As we already said, since the frontalis has no bony attachments, this can lead to collection of uh, fluid under the eyelids that is known as the black eye. Next important factor is the traumatic cephalohydrosis. This can also occur in the cranial vault. Uh, fracture and here uh, CSF gets collected, that the cerebral spinal fluid gets collected instead of blood. Now, the another applied aspect is caprous activity. You might have heard it is seen in newborns. It's a temporary condition that is occurring due to uh, interference of the venous return due to, during the passage of the head of the baby uh, through the birth canal. Now, the importance of the pericranium is that it is the outer periosteum of the skull. And it is attached, it is it's a loose, it covers the bone loosely, except in the sutural line where it's attached to the uh, endocranium. Okay. Now the importance is that cephal hematoma, here also there is collection of blood, but the blood collection takes place the shape of that of the bone itself. Now what is known as scalping? We have seen the first three layers. The importance is that the first three layers move as a unit. Okay, so the scalping or the scalping injury is more common. That is, you have you might have heard that in case of any, uh, some people might have um, injury of the scalp when the hair is caught in a machine. So, uh, like in case of uh, when we are going for any uh, picnic or something, the hair gets caught in the machine, and that can lead to the aversion of the first three layers because these three layers are connected intimately. Okay, now. Uh, in previous years, uh, previous ages, like uh, Red Indians used to uh, do scalping as a punishment, and this this is also used as uh, an identification for uh, flaps by the surgeons. Okay, so these are the important layers and the uh, important applied aspects. So we uh, dealt with the attachments, then we saw the uh, layers, five layers: is the skin. Uh, then closed network of subcutaneous tissue, aponeurosis and the epicraneous muscle which includes occipital frontalis and temporal parietalis, loose subaponeurotic tissue and the pericranium. So these were the five layers of scalp. Now in the next session, next video we will be discussing about the nerve supply, arterial supply, venous drainage and the lymphatic drainage. Thank you.